Dudes, you can tell that this is really frantic by the fact that I'm just filming this on the go. I've got no time! But the point is, we are doing something a little bit different today in that we are giving you something that should have been released two weeks ago. And we are too lazy to come up with a different video like it anyway. What do you want from us? We had to do the AUWU thing. We had to do go and look at a bunch of koalas that are about to die. And of course we had to review The Bachelor. So... I'm sorry, but I'm not seeing another slot there where we could have released this. It is old, nonetheless. <laughs> like, actually, now that I think about it, it's pretty much just like commenting on the Falkland Islands. Did you know that Bill Shorten said shimp? That's pretty much most of what this video is. Enjoy. Contractually required Simpsons reference coming thick and fast this episode. This is our equivalent of 22 short films about Sprigfield, except instead of The Simpsons, it's... Sorry, we had to figure out a way to stretch out about 10 seconds of Bill Shorten talking into a full video, but it is worth it. In case you haven't seen already, and I know you have, so let's just relive the glory. I think we need to do more and we need to, it needs to be transparent what's going on. Or fundamentally, if I can put in really plain English. Yes, you behave, Mr. Shorten. Permission granted. Mr. Morrison needs to make sure that he doesn't look like he's just a simp to Donald Trump on this very important <laughs> issue. Damn, stoic and down with the net. And you pass that up for f***ing Morrison? The following exchange he has with David Spears, all these Murray from Flight of the Concords moments that seem to plague Bill Shorten's life. <laughs> Check it out. Just explain simp. No, soft. <laughs> this is the closest thing I will ever give David Spears to a compliment. Good follow-up question. My only critique in that instance is that Bill Shorten should have said, if you want to know, maybe you should look in the mirror, Stitch. And because David Spears is such a simp, his response would still be, thank you for your time, Mr. Shorten. It is incredible how powerful the media nexus is in this country, that they are able to bench a leader who is not only tough on terrorism, calls the Prime Minister a simp, had plans for a national water bomber fleet before the bushfires. Scott Morrison still doesn't have those plans and invented the NDIS. What more do you want? Someone who isn't from a fascist union like the AWU. Ah, that's who had issue with Bill Shorten. The simpiest simps in Oz. Former, and I do enjoy saying that, former. BuzzFeed Oz employees who really have it in for Shorten. And when you look at the reasons why, it becomes very obvious because they're tools of the propaganda model and they have no idea that they are. What a combo, tool and stupid. A broken cog in the clock, so let's add another to that BuzzFeed list. Annoying. They don't have any actual reasons to hate Bill Shorten. They're that abstracted into this digitized little bubble they have that they think that the reason that he shouldn't be Prime Minister is, oh my God, he used simp in the wrong context. Which A, no he didn't, which means that Bill Shorten is more down with the youth than f you and you wonder why BuzzFeed Oz folded. Think about the extra layer of sadness on that. If anyone on earth should have no issue understanding what a simp is, it's people that work for BuzzFeed and Pedestrian. This guy who changed his Twitter handle to Friendly Kamish because he thinks that's an epic own despite the fact that all BuzzFeed journalists do exactly the same thing. Just like when they say, hmm, this friendly Geordie isn't so friendly. <laughs> Not mad. I've got three phrases that that I can fit in my head. Can I have money to be a thinker? That guy thinks if you think Bill Shorten is a Chad, you have serious brain worms. Okay, the guy who was the hero of the Beaconsfield mining disaster, lifelong servant of the union movement, got the Banking Royal Commission to go ahead, and nearly destroyed a Liberal government in a single term. Yeah, I do think the guy on a hostile media platform calling the current Prime Minister a simp is a Chad. Not to mention his wife is a total Stacy, as opposed to the guy who is a simp, doesn't know the definition of simp, and writes articles like this. Influencers say hiding likes on Instagram has made them more chill about posting pictures. Okay, okay, I see you, mammy. People are posting lots of nudes in the coronavirus pandemic. This new filter is supposed to block unsolicited dick pics. We tried it out. Wow, Cam, I take it all back. Your existence is more of a public service than Bill Shorten could ever hope to achieve. And just when you point out that his 
his entire body of work, the reason that he is paid is completely superfluous, pop sugar, worthless tripe, his response to that is, I'm very proud of my work, thank you. Well, I'm glad one person is. Simp. And seeing as you're struggling with the definition, Bill Shorten, if you'd like to define that for him. No, soft. And look, I understand that people are gonna say, why do you care about friendly Cammy so much? He's just a sand fly. True, but the entire media ecosystem is nothing but sand flies. And when they're swarming around Bill Shorten's head, fat ugly shits like Scott Morrison are going to look good by comparison. Having said that, those sand flies don't bother me at all. In fact, just stop buzzing around Bill Shorten. Buzz around me some more, because I monetize how much people hate you. I like getting bitten. And finally, last, and definitely least, Barclay McGain. You might not remember him from that infamous schoolies video at the Gold Coast last year that the young liberals filmed. They're putting our Australian jumper on, they're gonna sing the anthem, I mean, we gotta stop celebrating a culture that couldn't even invent the bloody wheel for God's sake. Just as a quick reminder, because I know you need it, as I even forgot about it, you can watch my response here, because this man has started Turning Point Arth. Yeah! If you thought Charlie Kirk wasn't enough of a c try his cheap rip-off Australian equivalent. He was throwing a tanty about a meme that we reposted that, I'll be honest, Barks, I didn't see you in it. How did you see you in it? You're really off in the distance there with a bar over your face, Bar Clay. But why are you offended by that? I've watched that movie. The guy you're superimposed over is the good guy. Let's read his press release response to this grave injustice. Before anyone else messages me, yes, I am aware of this film slash video made by friendly Geordies involving Peter Dutton, Gladys Berejiklian, and Scott Morrison, and the big guns of the Liberal Party, myself. Are you still a member, or what happened there? This guy is a serial loser. Oh, sticks and stones! Who spends his days making pathetic and defamatory memes about myself. Dude, I didn't make this meme. I just saw it, not you, it, and thought, Duh and retweet it, that's it. And others to boost his own ego. Notice he has nothing to say about the half hour long video dismantling Scott Morrison's character. No, 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 no. What? Me? Really goes to show what the core ideology of the Liberal Party is. Don't make fun of me, but also give me a taxpayer funded office where you remove the veil of his comedy. I love how they're always trying to give me this jab of you're not funny. Well, I can only hope to be as funny as you, Barclay. Your existence sets a very high bar. I mean, that was him getting egged by his own brother. Let's watch it again. Jordan is nothing more than a low-rating stooge for the Labor Party who appeals to low IQ minions that see him as some beacon of truth. Look, a lot of people can make that criticism, but the founder of Turning Point Oz, with its mighty 700 likes, ain't in that category. He's just one of a number of supposed influencers that seemingly allow me to live rent-free inside their heads all day, every day. Hmm. Where have I heard that phrase before? Bro, BuzzFeed News Arts has been living rent-free in your head so long it literally doesn't even exist anymore. Ha 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 I'm redundant. Oh. Wow, so many bastions of diverse thought coming up with the exact same call. Also, you're not living rent-free in my head. I make a lot of ad rev off you guys. I'm not a whinger, nor am I a victim, yet allow me to whinge and victimise myself. But their constant obsession with a 20-year-old economics student from the Gold Coast never ceases to amaze me. Oh no, guys, you know how I got you all to start donating to the ARC last year? Well, we've got to start a new charity for 20-year-old economics students in the Gold Coast. We'll call it Barclade. In this current climate, I fear for anyone who's bold enough to speak their mind and go against the grain. What is you speaking your mind? Hey! I'm in the back of a meme in the far off distance! What the f Look, if I knew you were in this meme, Barclay, I would have reconsidered posting it. A, because you're irrelevant. B, because I actually genuinely like you. That is more than I could ever say for people who formerly worked at BuzzFeed Oz. So to be honest, I was a little cut when you said that I'm not a good comedian because I actually do look up to you in the field of comedy. Nonetheless though, keep doing what you're doing mate. I'm sure we'll cross paths again another six months with your next comedy hit. Like the video of you, like me, are eagerly anticipating Barclay Brigade's next comedy drop. Ah well, if it isn't the simps. Please share and comment below. Come in.